To answer this question as comprehensively as possible, I've gone through my online portfolio. I think we can all agree that our portfolios would typically be a suitable representation of our best work. I looked up the lens data in each and every photo and then tallied them up in a graph. You can see there is a really, really clear winner here. Now, before I reveal what these lenses are, a little disclaimer first. First of all, try to ignore the lens mount and branding, because in this instance, I think it's the focal length that matters the most. An example of this is how many companies make 70 to 200 2.8 lenses, and in different mounts. Just because I use a Canon 70 to 200 doesn't mean I wouldn't use a Sony 70 to 200 in its place. There's no brand loyalty here, we're just focusing on the creative and logistical aspects of different focal lengths and zooms. Secondly, I've left out the medium format lenses from this graph. I originally included them, but all it did was confuse the results. There's a whole set of different prime lenses that were used only once for specific purposes. So with that out of the way, we have an equal fourth and fifth place, the Canon EFS 18-55mm. That's right, Canon's El Cheapo kit lens. Just because that lens was used to take this super risky, high speed sacrificial shot here. No need to explain why. And we also have an equal place with that lens, the Canon EF 16-35mm f2.8, which was used to take this shot in a tight interior space of a private jet. Now, I don't normally use this as my wide-angled lens, but I rented it out specifically for shooting lifestyle in dimly lit interiors, simply because it's a 2.8. Now in third place, we have the Canon EF 17-40mm f4, which was used to take these shots. Now this used to be my go-to lens at the start of my career, shooting highly modified feature cards for magazines. We wanted that low, slammed, wide, distorted look that's nostalgic towards early 2000s. But today, I just use it for shooting tight space interiors. Silver place goes to the Sigma Art 50mm 1.4. Now what makes this amazing is the fact that I've only owned this lens for the last year out of the last 20 years shooting cars, yet it comprises of 11 spots in my portfolio already. This is a lens I've recently discovered and has become a new favourite of mine, so I imagine this tally will only go up further in time. It is however slightly niche in that it's more used for narrow detail images, rather than those big important hero compositions. You can of course use this for heroes, but I like to show more background, and 50mm I feel is too narrow for that. And in first place, if you haven't guessed it already, it's the Canon EF 24-70mm 2.8, both in Mark 1 and Mark 2, with a total tally of 69 images. Nice. It's rather amazing how much I've used this lens, and it's because of how much work it gets that I don't mind spending the extra dollars for this very expensive lens. Now, 2.8 isn't necessarily for the extra light, but it's more for the high fidelity glass and performance. But the 24-70 4.0 honestly would do just as well here because I don't shoot hero shots at f2.8. I also found that my typical sweet spot with this lens is between 28 and 40 millimeters. And whilst the Canon EF version of this lens is outstanding, this score really applies to all the other brands and mounts as well. The 24-70 in the Nikon format, the Sony G Master lenses, as well as the RF mount 28-70mm 2.0, etc, etc. You can even apply this to the Panasonic 12-35 Micro Four Thirds. Now for the hardcore Prime lens enthusiasts, I agree that Primes are better than Zooms in many ways. If you're going to set your hero shot up at, say, 35mm, you're probably better off with a 35mm prime. But the best composition isn't always going to be at a fixed focal length. It's going to be at different focal lengths, depending on the subject matter, the angle, and the environment. It might not be 35, 50, or 80mm, it might be 41mm or 42mm. Simply moving further or closer to your subject matter is usually not enough, and changing the focal length alone is not enough either. You need to do both to gauge what the optimum composition is for your shot, and the 24-70 lends itself perfectly to this process I do. But I also want to give a shout out to the 70-200 2.8, which didn't make my list because it doesn't have any shots in my portfolio. Whilst I generally don't shoot hero shots with the telephoto, I think it's a crucial lens to have still for mainstream photography, probably more so than owning a 50mm prime because it complements owning the 24-70 perfectly. 
You can't always get that close to the action, and so the telephoto zoom handles this really well. I use this for panning and action shots, as well as some portrait and studio work as well. Motorsport is a whole different kettle of fish, and it has a lot more in common with, say, wildlife photography, where you have practically no control over your subject matter at all. Now remember, this is my style of work, and I don't wish to creatively inhibit anyone else's style of work, because I've seen shooters use really unorthodox zooms and primes to create their best work. The best lens is the one that best suits your style of photography. And so that's why the 24-70 is my best lens. As much as the 51.4 entertains me lately, it's still the 24-70 that's forever my first go-to lens for those all-important serious hero shots. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you want to check out my work directly, you can go to www.easternchang.com.